Mrs. Bednar say that there's conversation going on and that the city manager and she are talking. I'm here tonight to talk about a couple different things. And first of all, I'd like to talk about ordinance number 201136, and then we'll lead me into some of the hardships faced by businesses on the Carl Brownway area. 201136 was passed on 6 14 2011. I feel the council members, the city manager at that time, all realized the possible problem between having a business, a private business, a seasonal business, located on city domain property versus the issues faced by public property owners, including Loveland Simmons Fire Association, Bond Furniture, Ogden Heating, anyone else in that area, and also downtown Loveland. Those council members voted six to zero with one abstention, and that was Mr. Bedner. Those council members were then Mayor Rob Ryder, then Mayor Rob Weisgerber, Vice Mayor David Bedner, Mark Fitzgerald, Linda Cox, Paulette Lieber, Todd Osborne, and Brent Zook. All these guys realized the potential problems we are now facing. I'm going to say this again, not one business is against the Loveland Farmers Market. Okay? How it does affect everybody is a twofold question, and I've said this in our downtown meeting of council our businesses before. CC has heard me say this. Anything that affects a business one way, good or bad, can affect another business the other way, good or bad or indifferent. The issues we see with the Brown Building and the Jackson Street location is the fact that Jackson Street Market is a 10 by 130, maybe 140 square foot, or 10 by 130 or 140 square foot concrete slab. Those businesses, including Montgomery Cyclery, in the Brown Building lose their parking all day long. It's not just three hours while the market is running on. It is blocked off from 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. all the way through the end of the day. Now you've got nine businesses in there. One of them has 14 different people working in there. You also have a music theater or music teaching center that has nine or 10, and I'm not sure the exact number of areas where they teach music in. Not one of those people are against the market. They just don't feel it should be located in their parking lot that they pay rent for or that they use on a daily basis. Everybody's seen the photos that I put in to the Loveland Magazine about the parking as used. Mr. Ori came over today and we had a discussion. I think it was a good discussion. Okay, one of the things that was said was that parking lot was full today. Okay. Let's talk about bond furniture. First of all, I want to talk about this before we get there. We have a dichotomy of businesses in downtown Loveland, all in Loveland. Restaurants, eateries, pubs, offices, service, seasonal shops, retail, large, and government. That's downtown. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Also, nobody's going to disagree that the added traffic that the market brings in helps businesses. Nobody would say that. It helps the eateries and the restaurants more than it helps a business like mine. I am more of a destination. But it doesn't help the people in the Brown Building that can't use that parking. To me, this is about parking. There are other things, but when you take that away from people for an entire day that pay money for it, it's just not right. That's where we're at. We all want to see the market survive and do well. Last meeting, I was the one that brought up Ordinance number 201136. And I also said there was wisdom involved there to avoid this situation. And I said that Nesbitt Park, the parking lot right outside here, and McCoy would be the places that they could go to because it has to be on city owned property. Also, that ordinance says that the city manager and the director of the market have to work together, not city council. And I appreciate and thank city council for their position of staying out of it and let the city manager and Mrs. Bednar work because they're working hard to do this. Now it's been asked, why is Bond Furniture taking the lead of this? Why is Tim Canada taking the lead of this? It's very simple, I made a promise to my father. I would stay out of politics, stay out of presentations, stay out of doing anything that did not affect Bond Furniture. And this does affect Bond Furniture. I showed this to Neil today. We have what is called an upsheet. We track every customer that comes in. Here's a copy of it. 
Across the top it says sold, the day the customer came in. R is for referral, P is for previous customer, D is, DB is for drive-by, I, internet, TV, print, be back, and time of day that it comes in. I shared numbers with Neil today, okay? There is no doubt that it has cost us business on Tuesday between 2 and 6 p.m. That's fine. We can work through that. But what we can't work through is cars parking, which with my permission, behind our store and blocking our doors where we cannot get furniture out, people cannot get out, things of that nature. That's how it affected us negatively. The business we can adjust. I don't like having to do it. My people get paid on straight commission. They don't sell, they don't eat that day. It's that simple. But that's the way it is. That's the way our industry is. The last thing I want to talk about is the radius in which businesses, actually the second to last thing, radius is in which businesses are drawing from here in Loveland. Small eateries and shops, which we have quite a few, draw normally through my marketing studies and marketing education in a 15 to 20 mile radius. Mid-sized businesses and artisan businesses will draw, will draw 25 to 50 miles. Companies like Eats Hardware, excuse me, Loveland Hardware, probably 25 to 50, 75 miles. Eats Finch, a construction company, will go anywhere in the city. Bond Furniture, our radius is 100 to 125 miles. We give free delivery in 75 miles. We do business Kentucky, regular basis. Indiana, regular basis. Columbus, regular basis. We deliver to Pennsylvania, Chicago, Michigan, North Carolina, South Carolina. That's the dichotomy of businesses we have here in the drawing area we have here. Last thing I want to say is I've been privy from friends of mine to see what's going on on email. Everybody has the right to talk on email. It's been brought up that my father belly ached or complained about inconveniences due to the amazing race or due to events downtown. My father was one of the first Loveland Auxiliary Policemen. He also was one of two and went with two full-time officers to arrest one of the ten most wanted men on the FBI list here in Loveland. He also took his truck at no expense, no wanting no recognition, every Saturday morning for ten years, food collected and took it down to the free store for Cincinnati. When we came over here in 1988, there wasn't anything over here. It was, it's called the Whistle Stop at that time. And Brownies had closed. There was still a canoe livery here. But it was mentioned to me that Bond came here and then he, and then the Loveland Sims Fire Department bought the building and came over and started rebuilding downtown Loveland. It's a great area. Nobody wants to see any business fail. Nothing. But the thing is, we all have to work together. And what this has done is put a black eye on our city. In closing, I want to say this. One of the mentions on the emails I've been presented is that maybe we should take Bond Furniture and go back to La Madera Road. The mayor, the city manager, knows I have made that offer. I have told city council, I have told people in public that I know somewhere down the road we're not going to fit here. And if they want to build me a building on La Madera Run, smaller than what we have, I'm not trying to hold up to anybody, I will do an in kind trade to help this community. I'm not asking for anything bigger than what I've got. I will do what is right for this community and for Bond Furniture. I'm not here to hold anyone up. I'm not here to see anybody fail. I'm here to see all of us succeed and not put a black eye on our city. I hope everybody understands that. I hope everybody understands they are welcome, whether we agree or disagree, to come to our furniture store. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I want to see us all do well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr.